the University of Illinois Extension as the State Master Gardener Coordinator, and I am so glad you've decided to join us. Mid-American Gardener is your chance to get some answers to your gardening questions. And I don't care how cold it is outside, we always have things to talk about. Maybe you're thinking about where you're gonna plant next year, or maybe you're still trying to figure out what happened this year, and you wanna make sure it's not gonna happen again. Well, we always have a great group of panelists to help you out, and today is certainly no different. And we always have, I love the fact that we are, we are professionals, but we are also gardeners, so that's the good part. So John, what do we have? Well, you were talking, we were talking about the cold weather coming, and I said, you know, it's getting, and I have a lot of fruit trees, and I said, you know, I'm gonna have to get prepared. So I brought something to show that I really like, and is, I, I can't hardly do without for all the apple trees that I have, and pears, and peaches, and this is a, a battery-operated reciprocating saw. And it's much, much safer to me than a chainsaw. Much easier to start because all I have to do is put the battery in and it's ready to go. I recharge it and it gives me um, the safety and control that I like. But also when I do make the cut, it's very, very clean. And uh, the cut is very, very clean. And between each tree, just in case I do have some disease that I don't, I still wipe the blade down rather than, you know, it, I treat it like a pruner. I kind of wipe it with right. alcohol mm -hmm. or a chlorine mix, depending on how cold it is mm -hmm. uh, outside. I'll, if it's really cold, I'll use the, chlor the alcohol. Yeah. But I'm gonna show you, you can start very, very slowly, and, and that, that way you can get your, your mark on your, your limb where you want to cut it off. And then once you get that done, you can kind of <laughs> turn it up. I won't do this very long, but <laughs> it's easy to control. You don't get into the collar of the tree. And so I think it's a, if you have a lot of trees, this is a tool that, you know, during the winter when, we, when the trees are dormant, that this, would, this is, comes in handy. Okay, and so it's not traditional garden tool, we should it say, so not. you're probably not gonna find it in the gardening area of your local store. It's and gonna be in more in the tools, woodworking and, the tools. and tools. Right, and there are different types of blades if you have uh, a, a little smoother cut that's desired. There are blades with uh, less uh, vicious teeth, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And there are some even that are, they call pruning blades that are even more than this. This is just a regular wood uh, cutting uh, blade and I like that. Okay. It's kind of middle of the road. Or the pruning blade, that's a good idea too. So good, very good. And I know it's on my wish list. Hopefully, folks that are around me know this right now or are watching. So thank you very much, John. Always good. I love tools. <laughs> and Marty. Hello. My name is Marty Alanya, and I'm a private landscaper. I have a colleague that uses one of those. He loves them. Mm -hmm. Loves it. And I wanted to just point out a little bit uh, some, some tulip bulbs I brought in. When you're planting tulips, it's not hard to do. You can do it yourself. You don't have to hire me. Um, the pointy end goes up. I know that sounds silly, but some people don't know that. Pointy end goes up, <coughs> flatter side goes down. Try to keep your labels straight. They give away labels with, with the bulbs. Snag them. It's very useful till later. And also, I wanted you to notice that the coats on these little guys are different colors. So if you get them mixed up in a bag and you're like, dang, how did that get in there? Look at the coat color. They're different. These two are white varieties, but this one is white with red flecks, and the coat color reflects that red. These are darker, these are purple. These are darker than the ones that are yellow and golden. So they don't just look like a tulip bulb. Each one has a character of its own. Probably gardeners are the only ones that notice this stuff, but I thought I'd okay. let you in Good. a little secret. <laughs> Good. Good, very good. So is it too late to plant? It what do you isn't. Think? It's, it's, it's uh, with, even though the air temperature is really cold, uh, right now it's just dropped just this week, the soil temperature is not that cold. Yeah. Um, you can plant tulip bulbs. I've planted tulip bulbs when it was colder than this. I'd like to have these in the ground already, but yeah. I've had the flu. Yeah. So usually <laughs> so. we'd really like to seem like in October, so it's a good time to plant, but yeah, it's not too late. If you forgot and they were sitting on a oh shelf yeah. somewhere, just go ahead and get them in the ground. They're okay. better to plant them now than to wait spring. Absolutely. And oh right. yeah, yeah. They, won't, the they won't hold over the winter, so just, you know, Mud them in After if you your have holiday to feast, yeah. just go outside and plant tulip bulbs. Yeah, great Chunk idea. Them under there. Great. <laughs> You'd be surprised how loose the soil is, <laughs> even Dyke. in cold weather. Hello, my name is Dyke Barkley, and I'm from Paris, Illinois. I have my place, uh, Barkley Farms Nurseries, kind of specializing in perennials and grasses. And in addition, I teach the horticulture program down at Lakeland College in Mattoon. 
Uh, I'm going to start off here with a, a question sent in by email. It says uh, they planted some lavender in the garden this year and they're fairly new to gardening and wondering what they need to do to kind of protect lavender. Uh, lavender is kind of a tricky plant. The location is the biggie. Not so much that you need to protect it. It's, it's the rotting out of lavender and getting too wet. Um, so drainage is the big, big key. And we were sitting here talking and noticed in that picture and wondering if that, green, uh, in that previous picture, if the green was a downspout shoot, which means we're shooting water right into that lavender. If that's the case, you're going to have trouble. Lavender doesn't necessarily freeze out. It mostly rots out in the early spring when they're really mm -hmm. wet. The other, sick, other trick is uh, don't necessarily cut back lavender when you cut your other plants. You want to wait till it starts growing. Yeah. Uh, there's a disease that spread by moisture, and if you wait till it's green and growing, that actively growing will heal a wound up and stop the disease from getting in. It could easily be May before you cut your lavender back. And so good drainage, that's the whole key uh, to having a good good spot of, of English or common lavender. Yeah, yeah very, mm -hmm. very good. And lavender is one of those, it's like a location, location, yeah. location. Yeah. It, really it has to have good drainage. So yeah. that might yeah. be an issue looking at that So even in that site, maybe a little bit more mulch. If you had that site and you lost it, get that drown spout over and and maybe yeah. do a mini raised bed. I saw that rock Absolutely. area, yeah. maybe raise that up a little bit so that area will drain. You just got to get away from wet clay. That, that's yeah. going to be a problem. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a Mediterranean yeah. planet. It is gravelly over there, people. <laughs> it is yeah, rocky. it's just not necessarily Illinois, Midwestern mm, kind right. of soils. So beautiful rich to, loam here. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> so, Who knew our soil would be too good for yeah, some plants? too good for land. Anyway, I just wanted to mention, you know, I, to me, when the weather gets cold, I think it's a perfect time to really go through different catalogs. And I know sometimes, you know, we, we hate getting catalog, one more catalog in the mail. But to me, when there's a garden catalog, I love them. And there, I think the great thing is, is just there's so many different kinds. You know, and I think one of the things is, um, especially with like heirlooms, maybe you're interested in that. There's a bunch of them like this Baker's or Seed Savers Exchange. There's a ton of them out there. So, you know, get get with other gardeners, maybe see what catalogs they have. But I think the other thing that's great about garden catalogs is that even if you're not planning on buying anything, it's a great way to learn. I mean, I love seeing what new varieties are out there, whether it's just ornamentals or shrubs or whatever. I just really use them as that learning opportunity. And I, I, I know you can do this online, but I still like, you know, a cup oh, of yeah. tea in a catalog. There isn't anything better right no. what's on the cover day? of that one isn't that beautiful this is actually I, I was just this is a baker season this is actually super sweet atomic grape tomato those and they have such cool yeah. names i know those i didn't know tomatoes. if they were little eggplants or I tomatoes See? This day. I, I was like what in the world the things See? you learn things very good learn. okay any rate so one thing to do in the winter time when it's cold and we're <laughs> going to go ahead and go to our lines and on line two we have joshua and from bloomington and you have an issue with your garlic <laughs> well, I don't know if it's an issue. It just keeps growing, and it's oh. wintertime. Yeah. I just want to make sure if it dies off that it'll come back in springtime. That's just what they do yeah. Yeah. when yeah, the weather is halfway, yeah. you know. It's actually been pretty warm, yeah. you know, all things considered. Yes, so. until just recently, yeah. It's so uh, you'll get the green tops and... And they'll, they'll brown yeah. up and, and lay over and then new, new <laughs> and shoots And then they'll will, send new ones, yeah. They'll come right back in the spring once it's, the ground warms up. They'll... Yeah, don't worry. No. I yeah. defy you to get rid of it, actually, really. Yeah. <laughs> so a little mulch? What do you think? Do you have them, like, mulch, laying straw they don't or care. anything on them? They don't care. Usually I throw a little straw on mine. Yeah, I've, I've, I, I do just put some for straw weed mine. control, really. But. Actually, I, it wasn't straw. It was um, uh, the leaves that I mulched. Mm -hmm. You know, I vacuumed and yeah. threw a... Oh, you know, that, so if I they love keep that growing, stuff. that works great. Don't worry about it in the fall. So oh, good. yeah. Good. And on line three, we have Kay and from Decatur about overwintering, overwintering some tropical plants. Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Uh-huh, we mm -hmm. can. Okay. I have a bird of paradise that's still in a spot, and I just received not long ago a banana tree. What is your suggestion on the best way to overwinter them, besides having them in a room that has ample sunlight and is well, it's it's kind of cool, but it's not cold, or it's not real hot. What's your suggestion? Okay, so banana and sound like bird of paradise. paradise. What do you think? Well, banana is not going to be banana is not going to like cool weather. So what what's going to happen to it is you're going to lose your lower leaves. You're mm -hmm. you're just going to treat it like you would any other house plant, except it's a high light, high temperature house plant. And I don't know if I have a real trick other than if it gets too big and leggy. 
It'll take a while, but I've cut it back and let it restart all over mm -hmm. again. It'll send some it new, okay. new pup shoot. That's well, what I if, do. the problem is you got to get enough heat to get it going and yeah. not be, you know, have it look great by August. I, that's sometimes what you're Never into. Never grown a banana. So. And so it depends on the bananas. Um, and again, it, it, the hardy banana is going to take cooler weather if it's a uh, the botanical name is muscle buzz you. So the problem with banana is you just lose the lower leaves and it just gets taller and taller and taller. It, it, when you can't stand that, then cut it off and get it to reflush. It does better when you cut it off when it's hot. Mm -hmm. Bird of paradise, you just treat like any other house plant. Mm -hmm. Watch That's the moisture, it depends on the potting soil and how dry your house is. You just feel the soil, like again, like any other house plant, make sure it doesn't dry out. Okay, not great. too wet, not too dry. And yeah, and don't, don't overwater it. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say, typically when the light level is lower in the winter and we bring things in, um, they usually, staying a little bit on the dry side is usually a better idea. No, another thing I wouldn't fertilize, don't, don't fertilize when yeah. you bring them in. Yeah. That's probably a pretty good rule of thumb anyway, yeah. isn't it? In yeah. the right, winter time. Right. You wouldn't transplant, you wouldn't transplant, you wouldn't really, you're just gonna hold on to them until spring. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then I would double check, make sure you didn't bring bugs in. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Like yeah. aphids or something like that, because they'll explode, but you just visually look for them. Yeah. And then if you do find them, uh, I don't know. That's the question I have <laughs> coming up in the next calling question. Okay. You know, insect soap no, no. or insect something soap. like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I like take them the, to the bathtub and yeah, safer soap. Score my, yep. Yeah, so I'd use take a shower as with well. your plants. Yep. Yeah. Clean them up. I, I actually have been very surprised. I've had bananas it's sometimes, fabulous. and I just really didn't have a good place for them. And I've been amazed at how much they really kind of dry down and they look right. horrible. And you know, they kind of just sit there. I've actually done this twice now. I must admit, I've actually thrown my banana plants away in the springtime because I thought they were dead because I had overwintered them. You know, I've over, overwintered them in my yeah. basement. They looked horrible. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh my gosh, these things are dead. Threw them in the compost <coughs> pile, and guess what? Oh, they yeah. started growing mm -hmm. in the compost pile. And, I, the and I've actually done this twice. The hardy it's, it was actually the red one, the red you know, one. the red one, believe it or not. But it looked <laughs> terrible. But it was yeah. in the basement, so yeah. it was warm. See, and that's where I keep mine is the basement, and they kind of look yeah, like they've gone dormant. Keep mine in the yeah. greenhouse. So and but, yeah, yeah so well, off. some of us don't have greenhouse. But even then, it's hard. Because they, they start losing, they start losing. I mean, the greenhouse we let it, that even the hot one gets down to fifty five in the middle of winter, oh, yeah. Yeah. and it loses its lower yeah. leaves. I mean, yeah. I'm not yeah. like a dracaena. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and often people do overwinter things, or maybe they have you know house plants and stuff. Are there some tips to make sure that plants sort of make it through the winter time when it comes to like, you know, either they're overwintering or even just house plants? Are there some common misconceptions you think? I think if you just checking the moisture of the soil, just the finger yeah. test. Yeah. Go down about an inch if it feels moist at all, don't water. Because yeah. you don't want to overwater the, while they're inside. And mm -hmm. uh, and then if you got forced air, just make sure you don't have air blowing on it. Yeah. Because that extreme yeah. change really quick can really mess some plants up. Or right next to a door that people cold, could go yeah. in and out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, I don't know right. if anything really... Again, don't push them if they're an out... If you're, if they're a house plant you're using as an outside plant, you're just really holding on to them till the mm -hmm. next season, and then then clean them up, fertilize them, kick mm -hmm. them outside, and let them take off and go kick down. Kick them outside. Yeah. Good Throw luck them back, plants. You know, sometimes you can like geraniums and that you can actually they'll flush, and then you can trim them, and then stick those in the ground, and you start new ones. Yeah. Get bushier. But light's always the big issue indoors. Yeah. I, I'm actually sort of surprised too that often we ha uh, how often I have to water them, even though, you know, you're talking about certainly mm -hmm. don't overwater them, but especially when it's warm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we forget that, you know, you still have to keep them yeah. moist. But anyway, so good. So we're gonna go ahead and go through our uh, emails. So John? Oh. Okay, I have a, an email um, and uh, if they were had rhubarb questions. Uh, it's a little bit past that right now, but we're, I'm going to address this anyway. Uh, her, her rhubarb plants had blemishes that resembled water spouts. Do I destroy the stalks? What might be happening? Is the soil contaminated? And so, you know, what a lot of times mine, mine have, you know, if, if I'm watering and all of a sudden, if I'm watering something and I have a hose out there and I happen to go over the leaves and then it dries, you get those residual chemicals that are in your water mm -hmm. and they'll they will put a white mark on on the leaf it's mm -hmm. really nothing to worry about and uh, unless they get real wilty and um, um, I, I, I the, the chemical that's in the leaves that you have to worry about is not going to go down to the stock unless it freezes or something like that or the leaf is really diseased then you, and, and w wilting is usually the, the best sign for that. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get that chemical kind of going back into the <coughs> stock and then, then I would pull it 
and uh, or just cut off the the uh, stem at the ground and wait for new ones to come. Okay. Okay. Very good. Rhubarb always a always a good perennial crop in the vegetable garden. Oh mm -hmm. my goodness! Marty? Yes. Um, we had a, a viewer inquire about some fence plants. They were wondering if we had suggestions. I, I happen to have an inside track on this particular question, and I know the fence runs north and south, and there's an evergreen at the north end. But the remaining section of chain link fence is uh, pretty much full sun. So um, I was thinking grasses might be nice. It depends entirely on your preference. But I would suggest um, some grasses. I would suggest maybe some hydrangea. Uh, vanilla strawberry is a really nice variety. Um, and then maybe some aronia or chokeberry. It's called, aronia is the genus. It has red berries on it and then the leaves turn brilliantly red in the fall. It has a nice ash gray structure. The grasses persist through the winter. The hydrangeas have a nice structure as well. Uh, the flowers open white and then get creamy and then they start to pink up and then they stay through the winter as well. So you have winter interest, I mean you have year-round interest with these three plants and there, I mean there are multitudes of other um, plant material that you could choose but for ease of cultivation uh, they should do well with the sun ex exposure uh, the grasses, the panicum or uh, calamagrostis, I would suggest. Panicum has a, a lot of different varieties. They usually have sort of a bluish cast, and then the variety Shenandoah turns red in the fall. The variety Prairie Sky is very blue, and then it turns yellow, golden yellow in the fall. Um, Carl Furster, calamagrostis looks like feather reed grass. It looks like wheat. It has mm -hmm. a very weedy look. It's very upright. If the panicum doesn't have full sun, It'll tend to flop. The calamagrostis will never flop. God bless you, Carl Furster. It stands nice, nice and straight. Um, it'll camouflage the fence a little bit. It'll give you some privacy and year-round, year-round interest. Yeah. So and that's sometimes, you know, sometimes with privacy, it doesn't have to be this, this solid yeah. thing. Yeah, you it's know, more like you summer. Just wanna, like, yeah. yeah you know, when you're barbecuing, you don't bit. want them looking you right <laughs> on the chicken there. You know, so. <laughs> what you're cooking. Yeah. Or whatever it is. Okay. Very good. Thanks, Marty and Dyke. Yeah, I have a, a question here on uh, succulents. They were and their pictures they sent, and they saw some white flecks on their succulents. And I think this is going to just kind of wrap into oh, what we wow. were talking again and ago. Uh, I'm pretty sure what looking at the picture, what I saw was mealybug. And the two things that you could bring in on succulents. This is some little echeveria. Uh, yeah, that white spot you see yeah. there, that is definitely a mealybug. It looks like there could mm -hmm. also be some aphids there. Those are the two that you're going to bring in. Uh, mainly because mm -hmm. they're also greenhouse pests and when you bring them in you don't have any natural predators left and so first thing I would do even though they're succulents you want to keep the water or the, the watering ray down you could probably give these guys a bath too and knock a lot off that way um, but I think uh, both of those insects uh, they don't run around they're not fast they can multiply on you quickly but they don't escape and get you know they're going to stay right there mm -hmm. I think uh, rubbing alcohol on those mealybug if you want to take the time little q-tip mm -hmm. dab it on one plant that's going to be easy uh, a lot of plants that's a lot of work but uh, the rubbing alcohol immediately uh, dissolves uh, the insect I don't know as I would coat the whole plant because these succulents are covered with a wax coating and it'll eat that wax coating off the other thing you can try is just something like insecticidal soap take them to a sink take them to the bathroom get some insecticidal soap that Horrible. coats them that'll take care of those mealybugs and aphids and it'll take one more than one application but you just have to keep your eye on them and not let them you know, keep going in big numbers till next spring. Yeah. That's probably the biggest thing with insects is just, it just watch them, look at them, right. make sure that the yeah. populations right. just don't go crazy. The and succulents aren't particularly prone to them. You yeah. just have them there. They got started this fall on these plants. They probably jumped for some other plants to these. Mm -hmm. And you brought them in and, 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 and you know. Okay. Just okay. get them knocked down. They shouldn't be a continual so problem. regularly visit your house plants, then you'll know. So we're going to go back to the callers. And on line two, we have Ziki from Arnsville and about burnt irises. So what can we do yes. for you? Mm -hmm. My husband took and burned off some grass and uh, got away from him, <laughs> and it burned off part of my iris bed. Are so I was wondering <laughs> if you knew if that would survive or not. Are you still talking to him? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Uh, not for that day. <laughs> okay, not for that day. Well, you're a kind person, so what do you think? Burnt irises. <laughs> Won't affect uh, No, this should be fine. Uh, your biggest problem with burning grasses and burning irises is if it, you have so much volume that it builds up heat and it will cook. Um, the, the irises, corn, as yeah. long as it didn't sit there and have a whole big bonfire on top of they'll be out yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. You just kind of lost a little bit of the cover in that. Same thing with grasses. Prairie grasses can kind of tolerate as long as it doesn't burn heat. Miscanthus does not like it, so you be careful when I've heard, I had to actually in class today, can you burn a grass? You can't lump them all together. Some can tolerate it and some can't. And it really has to do with the heat cooking the new shoots for next year. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. With this warm weather, we've had some shoots already start out. Oh, yeah. I, I took the yep. students on a hike around wow. campus and we had hydrangeas breaking bud. Mm -hmm. uh, I was surprised at what already had broke for next year yeah. just because we were uh, way too warm. There's Have all kinds noticed? of things breaking. Have you yeah. noticed how many crab trees around town are in bloom and fruit at the same time? Yeah, Several, some, I've seen. Several. Some wacky so weather. Not, nothing we're going to yeah. do about it. Just, yeah. yeah. And nothing anyway. you need to worry about with your. So your irises should be fine. So I they think should. he's out of the Unless woods. you're just going to hold it over his head and tell him Unless, he has to yeah, wait. Yeah, you can tell him different. If you, you may need some like new plants next. I'm changing my tune. You need new plants <laughs> next spring. Shopping. That's that's going to be the answer. Okay, very good. Thanks. And on line four, we have Paul from Danville and about overwintering some aging geraniums. What can you do for you, Paul? Yes, yeah, so I have some geraniums I brought in, and they are probably three or four years old, and they're getting along and straggly and their blooms are not as full as they like to be. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know what it, I could fertilize to get them to multiply more, or should I just uh, chop them off and start all over again? So what do you think? Because you were going to talk I, about that. Time, yeah, you? I would, I would yeah. not fertilize them. Um, whether you, you know, if, if they're not to the point that, that, that they're so lanky that they're going to be in your way for this, for the winter, I would wait till spring. Then you trim, you take them out to the sun, let them flush, and then you trim them, and then you can take those cuttings and stick them into sandy soil or a, a, a pot, and they will come, you know, you'll have twice as many next year. But uh, uh, as far as fertilizing, I, I wouldn't do that now. You don't wanna be pushing uh, the growth because they just don't have the sunlight for them to to do what they they, they normally do, mm -hmm. and so you're going to put more stress on them uh, if you fertilize them. Um, they may look like they need fertilizer, but I I really wouldn't. Um, you don't have to overwater them. Geraniums will, you know. I, I what I do with some of mine is I pull them out of the pot after I've dug the soil around them and just throw them into a paper bag and take them downstairs into the into the basement. It's an unheated basement and in my garage and then spring bring them back out they're a little a will uh, they're not as firm as they were when i took them down but i put them in a pot water them well and poof they're they're right back so you it seems to be a theme tonight as in sometimes <laughs> plants look horrible they look horrible over the winter time but wait till spring you can you can <laughs> deal with them so don't give up on them yet paul and on line three we have a uh, caller uh Deddy from ran tool and you have a question about banana plants on wow. line three uh, yeah, yes. No, not, not a question. I had a comment about how to overwinter okay. banana plants. Nice. Uh, a friend of mine taught me to do this. I lived in a little apartment with not much space and no garage or no basement, and I just cut it off, uh, made sure it had been watered recently so the roots were moist, uh, sort of took it out of the pot, didn't keep all the soil, just kept the soil sort of make it around the roots, stuck it in a heavy-duty plastic uh, garbage bag, and put it in the back of the closet and left it all winter, brought it out in the spring, put it in the pot, and it grew. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. So they really are pretty tough, aren't they? They really You notice she didn't compost it. So, she, yeah, she yeah. didn't throw it in the compost like I did. So thank you very much for that. I love learning from other gardeners. So you can see it is pretty pretty yeah. easy to, to dig them yeah. up. And they're actually pretty easy to dig up, even though they're, they're, yeah. they're you know, big. They're so succulent yeah. and stuff. They're pretty easy to dig up. And we're going to go ahead and, and get another uh, caller in. So on line two, we have Kathy. And you have a question about grapes on line two? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Hi. I have grapes that, um, the vines, and I've had them about five years. First year come out produced real good after that I've never had any grapes grow. Are you okay. pruning them? Yes I am. 
Okay, I'm not a Trump here, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Usually people don't have yeah, grape crops, you know, they just don't prune, prune enough. Yeah. You have to prune you have to pretty hard. Yeah. You have to prune hard, don't you? Like yeah. 80% you have to, of it yeah. is yes. going to be gone. You want to take it back yeah. to, you have to prune where it almost looks like, like you, you, you stem. Yeah. took it back to almost to the road. I mean, you leave about, you know, depending yeah. on the, the diameter of your of uh, how big okay. it is. But we have had some crazy springs, too, where we they've bloomed and then we've had some frosts. And that has killed, yeah. killed the, uh, right. the the fruit. So right, right. I know. Be I know. patient. It, so yeah, yeah, be patient and make sure you're pruning properly. That's always the right thing. And uh, it always oh, always seem to run out of time. But I do want to thank mm -hmm. Marty, so who quick. is graduating. Our floor director is graduating landscape architecture. Maybe we'll get him back on. And there he you can go. Be like, he can be instead of behind the camera. We get another right one. He can be an all Marty so, show. Great. Yeah, yeah. Great. Right. all Marty show. Marty Marty show. Yeah. Very good. And yeah. anyway, as you know, you can always. Connect with us through Facebook or email and get out there, maybe start start planning for next year. I think it's a great, you know, it's cheaper than therapy and it's a, just a great way to get through the winter. I love planning. So we'll see you again next time. Thank you.